Welcome to the Otimo CIO podcast, where we bring you insights, strategies, and stories from the brightest minds in IT leadership. I'm your host, Raja Gudepu, and in each episode, we explore how today's CIOs and CTOs are not only driving innovation and shaping the future of technology, but also mentoring and inspiring the next generation of IT leaders. If you're navigating digital transformation, integrating cutting edge solutions, or seeking guidance to grow as an IT leader, this podcast is for you. Let's dive in. I'm thrilled to have with us today a distinguished guest who has been at the forefront of technology leadership across various high impact roles. Currently serving as the global CIO of Bain & Company, which is regarded as one of the world's most respected consulting firms, Ramesh Razdan has consistently demonstrated exceptional leadership in driving innovation and digital transformation. With a proven track record of delivering strategic value through technology, Ramesh brings a wealth of experience and a forward-looking approach to our conversation today. Ramesh, welcome to the show. Delighted to be here, Raju. So Ramesh, let's start off by talking about your journey. Could you tell us a bit about your personal journey and what inspired you to pursue a career in technology and how did that path lead you to your current role as the global CIO at Bain? I think it's a fantastic question. All of us have a story to tell and uh, my story is I I come from the remote village of uh, remote village of Indi- remote area of India uh, which is Kashmir and uh, the journey of has been constantly reinventing myself constantly learning myself and navigating this uh, navigating ecosystem uh, to deliver to full potential i don't know whether i would have envisioned myself to be a cio of uh, uh, management consulting when i actually was growing up I, I i take one day at a time and i take think about 2 to 3 years ahead of myself and kind of chart out a journey and uh, and pivot as appropriate to make sure I am future proofing myself uh, towards towards the direction of the travel. So I would say is uh, I don't think I would have envisioned I I always knew I would be in the technology or financial business. That was uh, my uh, claim to fame. I was super smart on math and super smart on sciences. But uh, I think journey is it, journey is where it is. Uh, there have been a lot of pivots, a lot of learnings, a lot of challenges, a lot of opportunities, and that's makes you uh, that makes you what what you bring to the table. That's a, that's a very inspiring story, Ramesh. And, you know, coming from India, I know what that plight, I can resonate with that. But, you know, coming from, you know, Kashmir and now a global CIO at Bain, uh, that is that is incredible. So first of all, congrats on all the success. Um, you know, Ramesh, strategy is a big part of a CIO's job. So in, in your role as CIO, how do you align the technology strategy with the broader business objectives of your organization. Yeah, I, I think what we know today, we're living in the world of uh, technology and AI disrupting every part of the business. So technology is not a, just an enabler, which it was previously. You're not just setting, uh, running the business of keeping the business running, securing the business, as well as enabling the employees. You are actually delivering new value to business and company. So understanding what is the key differentiation for your own company, uh, how do you think about that and how do you connect the technology strategy to a business strategy is is critically important. And whether it is delivering new products and services, whether it is delivering efficiencies to the organization or whether it is security, technology is the only place where you actually can deliver all three, which is fantastic. So every technology leader today in today's world has to has to do two important things, focus on execution, but think strategically. I think about the leader today has an important character in blend strategy, the execution. And strategy is connecting to what is the value and how, what can be the value. Sometimes is what can be the value? How can we differentiate ourselves? How can we, how can we create new value for the organization and deliver that from a technology execution? That's refreshing to hear, uh, Ramesh, because most of the times when we hear about strategy, you know, when, when leaders talk about the what of what needs to be done and ignore the how, you know, they become goal statements, right? Instead of actual strategies, it's refreshing to hear that, you know, you see 
strategy as both, you know, goals, visioning, and then execution. I think what, what, I, what I say is strategy has to be blended with execution. If strategy is not coupled with execution, then you can have everything on a piece of paper whether you're not making progress. So important is to be, I, I think we're in an interesting part of the journey in the technology that is to be practical, is to be future proof, think about a direction of travel, but deliver it on an ongoing basis. And when you learn and iterate and pivot, I think is the key way to do that. I think if everybody would say, I have cracked the code, what five years out would be? I think we'll be kidding ourselves. What we know is what next two to three years would be. We know the direction of travel, what things are headed towards, and then executing that to me is the different session, uh, which kind of blends to the topic about the leadership is also, how do you think strategically? What is the different session? What is the value that the company brings to the table? And how can technology enable that? I think is a, is a key part of that. Uh, and I can give you a few examples of what, what I think about that, but to me it is bringing strategy to an execution lens that actually brings value to the organization. That's great. And you mentioned emerging, like in, uh, delivering incremental progress as you go, even though you have three to five year roadmap, right? And with the with the advent of building upon that, with the advent of you know, pay, you know technology, the new emerging technologies coming up and the pace of change, how do you prioritize emerging technologies and decide which ones to invest uh, in to ensure your organization stays ahead in the competitive consulting landscape? I, I think it is. this is a challenge for every organization these days. There's no easy answer and the answer is we have to do both. Uh, you have to make sure you are uh, running the operations of business today but also future proofing yourself and trying to figure out which areas you want to learn, you want to get smart, and you want to continue to learn on that. And I think the AI is a, this whole Gen AI use case is a fantastic example. When I, when, when I look at a story, like three years ago, it was a concept, people even didn't know that. We actually had a, had a relationship with that company and we had three use cases in production before even ChatGPT Enterprise came was exploded. So I think that the question is may not be a full blown answer. It's just getting smart about what the technology is, trying through prototypes and experimenting with that and just saying, okay, this may be a real thing and be, being ahead of that. And also I think it has to be what is in line with what the company's uh, objectives are for a consulting organization versus a product organization versus what a, a CP company, the value would be different. Just understanding that thinking is, we don't need to be on the bleeding edge for all the stuff, but understanding what those disruptions may occur and how do we connect to the value of the organization, I think to me is the differentiation that differentiates the winners from winners from others. That's 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 great. And as you as you put your you know technology roadmaps um, for your organization, I seldom I I I, I hear um, you know leaders talk about people, process, and technology. Right. And what is your opinion on how people, process and technology together would form, um, you know, key pieces of your strategy? Is one more important than the other? How would how would you look at all those three pillars? I think the most important asset for any organization is the people part. Of it. Without people, you really can't do it. So I think about the foundation of every technology is allowing everybody to bring the best of themselves so that they can be at their full potential. If, every, if that were to happen, I think that the strategy will become to full fruition automatically. But you also need to give people inspiration. Inspiration is why do they exist and how do they create value? Because all of us want to be connected to a value that I can personalize in my own context, but also appreciates me as who I am. And so I think just kind of bringing down, if I think what people process technology, technology is critical, obviously foundational, but people are super foundational and inspiring them, educate, uh, inspiring them, giving them a vision why, what, how we create the value and also removing hurdles. I say my job every day is to remove hurdles for people so they can actually be at their best potential. People are super smart. They know what to do. You just need to enable them so that they can actually do what they are, uh, what they can. That's fantastic. And and you know, based on just building upon that, um, I wanted to 
pivot into your leadership style and 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 ask a you know ask a few um, questions uh, in a, in a fast paced environment that we live in today. How do you foster a culture of innovation and continuous learning within your technology teams? I, I think. Uh... People ask me often, what is the one thing that will differentiate winners from losers? Obviously, people are that, but if I was to elevate that, to me, what will differentiate winners from losers is leadership. And the leadership has to have one key attribute in today's world, which is it has it has to be servant mindset led, which is I am the servant of the people. People are super smart. How can I actually enable them? How can I inspire them? And I can how can I uh, give them the tools so that they can bring the best of themselves and uh, and fostering an environment and inclusion, uh, inclusive diversity and inclusion kind of brings the best of the stuff. So to me, uh, I think that is leadership is a critical part of it, particularly in today's world, because everybody is trying to figure out a purpose. How do, what do I exist? How do I do that value? A newer generation much more than, much more than uh, ever before is asking this question what value am I going to do? How are we doing that? Purpose becomes important, connecting to the purpose, inspiring them, but also being the servant of them is is critical. Uh, so leadership plays is the key differentiator to unlock the full potential of the people value to deliver the outcome that uh, business is aspiring to do. That's 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 super insightful, and you know, couldn't agree more. You know, in terms of navigating a significant challenge as a CIO in the organization as you are demonstrating that servant leadership. Can you share an example of a time when you had to, you know, navigate like a significant challenge as a CIO and how you led your team through it? I think challenges are there every day and uh, there's not a single day and that you don't have that. I think most important thing for people uh, as they come through that is First, I think about an oxygen mask myself. I have to be at my best self to be able to navigate my team. So when I wake up in every day in this challenging and complicated ecosystem is to prepare myself for the day. And preparing myself for the day with either a walk or run or a meditation to make sure my I am grounded on the facts and I don't have as many biases as I can. We all have lenses that we all wear and we need to remove those lenses and become very objective and thoughtful as what, what kind of brings who we are. We all, at the end of the day, are good human beings. There's no doubt about that. But uh, I think the lenses we wear, the environment we grew in, and uh, the learnings we have had shape who we are. And the reality is a lot of that is relatively true. It's true, but relatively true. Because what is true for me may not be true for you. And just embracing and appreciating, listening more, and uh, talking to people more, understanding their context, having empathy towards that. And I think one, one of my differentiating, I trust people by default. I tell them you can only break my trust. I don't, I, you, don't, you don't need to have to earn my trust. You can break my trust if you don't execute to stuff or you go stuff. So I would just say is, it is first is important for me to be at my best. Because if I am not my best, if I don't have myself as ready, I can't ask anybody else to do that. I can't ask, my family, I can't ask anybody else uh, to do it. Being myself, then bringing that best of myself uh, to the organization is how I deal with that. Because the challenge is going to be every day, every minute. It, it is about being objective, removing yourself from that particular situation and being objective around it. Because once you get into the situation, it's like a grind. It's like a situation. It, every situation becomes so big and our mind uh, plays on us to make it bigger and bigger. So rather than being just taking ourselves out of the situation. If I don't have a solution to a problem, or a, I just go for a walk. And I say, okay, let me give some objective thinking about it. Because sometimes you get into grind and we're constantly, constantly thinking about it till you actually come out of the circle to say, there may be different ways to solve it. And almost in every case, whenever I have a difficult situation, I go for a walk, I actually come back with a very different thought process to say this can be solved in a different way. That's fascinating. You say, you said, you know, you, you, you trust by default and then, uh, are, you know, you can only break my trust, which is a great way to, you know, connect with your teams. Um, and, you know, building on that, like, has there been a time, and I'm sure there have been many times when you had to say no to things, right? So w what is your approach to saying no? 
I, I think being transparent means you have to be objective. And this is my learning through the life is uh, the hardest thing. In one other question I can maybe related to that is, uh, at least from the culture we come generally no saying no is a very hard thing because we like to say yes. And I think this has been a big learning for me to say no. But saying no in a way that is inspirational and actually brings to the, because people don't actually object to the no. People object how you actually say the O oh, and it's not about you, it's about the system. And sometimes you can just saying is no to a promotion, no to something else, no to, we are not going to do that because we can't fit into the process. We only have so much of things to do and unfortunately this cannot be prioritized. I think to me, it is not a question of no. I think no is part of the process to prioritize and focus on things. Without focus, you can't get anything done. So important thing is to focus on things. Important is to communicate transparently what and what, what, why not, but do it objectively without emotions. I think to me, emotions are illogical. There's no logic that can define emotions. I want to be out. I want to take as much emotions out of the process, but be more factual and transparent and be a calm and collected leader. It's not about an emotional answer. It is about a factual answer. And I talk about two key things that the decision matrix for any, any decision we make has to have three key things. What is right for the client? Who what is your end client? What is right for the company? And what's right for the people? I am the last one. I don't, it doesn't need to be about me. If we make a decision around client, what is right for the client, what's right for the company, what's right for the person, I think we'll always end up making the right choices. Brilliant. What is your biggest accomplishment that you're, that you're most proud of in your role as the CIO? I, I think that's a great question. I, it, it, it sometimes is like hard for us to kind of comprehend what, what has been great. I think to me, the greatest people is the pro growth. And uh, today I think about growth of the people, the people that have outgrown or are, are operating at full potential throughout my life in 30 years. I have actually mentored and grown 50 to 100 people. So when I look back, I look back is what am I contributing back and what are the people actually doing that actually can outshine me. That is the, uh, the best motion, the best uh, moment for me to say people can do if I was a small part of it, I actually helped them accomplish that. But to me, that, that differentiates me. I think technology, I have done so many things. I have done multiple ERPs, multiple AI things, but what I can do to help people to me is what actually uh, inspires me. That's very inspiring, Ramesh. And, and, you know, I believe great leaders build other great leaders and it is awesome to hear, you know, hear you take that view. Um, now, Leadership often involves dealing with setbacks and failures as well, right? Uh, can you share a time when things didn't go as planned and how you handle the situation both personally and as a leader? I think, as I said, part of part of the, the, the hardest thing for me is that the success criteria, if I look around and ran, ran, ran back, I was one of the fastest growing leaders in my previous company, EMC, and I, sometimes the system does not, does not train you enough how to deal with uh, how do you deal with complications? And we feel like our own success is kind of breeds it and busyness is a good thing. And having calendar back to back and kind of like feel like you're flying in the air is the, is the right way to do that. Today, I don't think that way. I, I think about, I have a time for my own self. I have a time for to come and collect and be my best self. I'm prepared for the meeting rather than running from one meeting to another meeting is important. I think what I also realized, hard part of it is when you are a technologist to grow into this, you kind of create a person of yourself. People feel like you're, my biggest learning was people thought I was the, I was a super smart technology guy. And I, do I have a business leadership? Do I have a business knack and whatnot? It's hard because the persona you create, it's hard to overcome that. And you tend to be boxed in certain cases and unboxing this stuff. I kind of give this, analogy or like a snake analogy a lot of cases it's hard to uh, hard to leave your old skin back and come back to this because what made you successful till point of time you have to pivot so focusing what i learned hard is yes i knew understand technology i knew every every bit of it but building relationships was not in my dna building uh, cross functional relationships talking to people uh kind of, I would say, in an unstructured way. The best meetings happen in an unstructured way. Focusing on the people. I think I was always focused on the people, but even focusing on broader people, 
focusing on the brand a lot of times when you're in an organization you create a brand but nobody outside the world knows you so i think the two biggest learnings for me if i so is creating a brand for yourself what who you are and why you are and what do you do the other part of it is letting go of things that and building those relationships across the organization to build the culture of trust because once you have trust in the system then people automatically kind of align to the stuff now from a people standpoint you still need to have a strategy and execution to the business strategy that's not overcome that but most that would not work if you don't have the relationship and uh, with the right people from the ceo to the to the executive suite to the down to the business leaders and what not you need to have a, you need to have a strategy to do that 10 years ago i do not i didn't have i, I had not done that, that enough i was more of a transactional relationships today i have my ea has 300 relationships that i maintain on an ongoing basis i have a structured way to kind of deal with that as well. i think relationship is something that actually is critical in the organization to help us navigate that that's brilliant and you know it 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 sounds like um you you reflect and you're also self aware one has to be self aware of what what they're good at you know what they can improve on and it sounds like that reflection is a big part of what you do yeah and i think part of that is what what i what i think about like this is something people i meant that i think about me as a person have five key stakeholders that i have to manage uh, today and uh, there's no analogy because i think world is flat i tell people i am your servant but but if there was a way to represent i think about you have to manage up you have to manage down and that generally most people do some people manage up really good some people manage down very good but what people forget about is left and right and which is our customers and peers generally those are the hardest sometimes to manage and having a clear, clear relationship with them is important also having uh, skip levels understanding the vibe of the organization is important when i think about down i only don't talk about your own leadership i have skip levels across the organization to understand from an east from a, a fresh college graduate to understand what's working because sometimes i need to unlearn myself to understand what's going on in the ecosystem so looking at four key stakeholders which is up down left right i think about customers uh, you you are people up people down left right to do that and i think the fifth one is you need to uh, manage the market what is the brand you are creating for yourself what is the how do people know about you and that is an important aspect to forget about to, to, is it's not to forget about because uh, that that is defines who you are the world is flat now and you have an all the opportunities to brand and uh, set up i don't like to market market is a wrong word for us is to do what you are legitimately and authentically doing that you want to tell people I think kind of creates a brand for yourself which to me is grounding yourself. You don't want to be marketing yourself, you want to be branding yourself. That's a great way to put it and it 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 looks like you invest a lot of time and energy into the relationship aspect of it which is critical for, you know, a leader's success and with so many of, you know, stakeholders that you have to manage, are you are you using some sort of an AI to manage that? you know are you thinking about <laughs> letting ai lose on helping you manage better relationships i i use ai in everyday life and everything possible uh, i i think i start the journey starts with me i need to tool that my team thinks we need roll out i kind of say oh i am the guinea pig you should actually invest with me whether that's from a laptop to to a new phone to a to a new technology like zoom ai or whatever else uh, or, or chat gpt i actually try themselves how can i leverage all of these tools to help me become the whole, reduce the friction in me process and allow me to focus on where i can add value and i think that's the journey for us to do so i am absolutely leveraging tools across the full value cycle brilliant and and you know just continuing on that uh, on that topic of uh, ai um artificial intelligence is transforming industries across the board as we know Uh, how is your organization leveraging ai to deliver value to your customers and enhance internal processes yeah so i i am uh, so as i mentioned earlier uh, is i think we have been on the forefront of this we have been uh, we have delivered we today have 15 plus products today in uh, production and 100 plus innovations across the ecosystem mostly internal facing but our own uh, 
our own we are working across hundreds and hundreds of organizations across the new world delivering value from strategy to use case to actual delivery of ai we're doing that and i i think that's we can get into a lot more details on that on the internal side it's always i i think it's inspirational what we have done and how we have accomplished the system and how we have actually put a system in place to kind of capture the innovation and harness the innovation and uh allow the best ideas to win uh so so we we have a lot of these tools we can get into some of those specifics we have a tool that will build on knowledge we have a tool that actually will build on uh other system and part of that is also as the technology is going we get mature to understand how do you set up a technology architecture how do you think about data ecosystem how do you think about monetizing some of this information i think we are learn we are learning a lot and some of that learnings i share with a number of cio forums across the across the globe and and can you elaborate you know a little bit on on those you know details and specific maybe maybe a specific use case that could be a little unique um in in your business model as to how ai has you know significantly the solution that you and your team have put in has significantly given you know an edge you know for bain or uh improve the internal processes you know so you could realize tremendous efficiencies yeah i think the, the i think 18 or 18 plus months ago we built this tool on the knowledge platform so if you look at us we are uh we're a knowledge company i think about is i like we have the people and we have the differentiating knowledge in different industries and what not how can we bring the best of our value to our clients is a key part of it every organization has a lot of value but it's all over the place but you can't find the right information so how can we synthesize and synthesize and simplify and provide an experience to people so that they can ask a question and, and the right information comes to their feet that we deployed to uh, everybody in pain almost uh, toward to 18 months i think 18 months plus it is one of the highest used apps today which is uh, with a in, in pain uh, which invented the nps we we have the highest nps about 75 plus which is fantastic i think transforms the way we do the work simplifies the work anywhere we can take the friction away and allow people to focus on what they differentiate on i think is truly truly good then there are a lot of other tools which we are now in the process of thinking about how can, how can we then there are industry standard tools out the shelf tools like chat gpt but how do you build gpt is on top of that i think the other top part of it i uh, say is how how will we leverage innovation i how we how we how we have uh, encourage people to innovate and build a marketplace now to let the best best idea this is something that is emerging for us to say uh, i think uh, i am firm belief that innovation at the edge will win and we need to harness the collective wisdom of the organization let the best ideas let the best ideas come to the top fantastic and speaking of uh, ai and and how it's helping your organization you know achieve better efficiencies you know just pivoting you know a little bit to cybersecurity and applying that to ai like as the cyber threat is evolving um you know the threat landscape is getting bigger it's real um and the attackers are getting more and more sophisticated right the same tools that we have you have are the same tools that they have um are you how are how are you approaching cyber and specifically how are, are you applying ai to create better cyber solutions within your firm i think it's like as you beautifully said ai can be used for good purposes or it can be not it can be used for not so good purposes as well and we have to realize that yeah so i i, I think my, our goal is to to be uh to be taking it head on and make sure we have the right solutions in place i wouldn't say that would be something that we would want to build i think we want to leverage an industry solution where some of the other people who have actually built the solutions can leverage it I think there's a lot of innovation going on that is we are at the forefront of there are companies that are doing that we have been uh we have been investing uh we have been kind of exploring them figuring out what are the solutions they have that can allow us to leverage those tools for our staff on top of that we have to also manage the most important asset for is to understand the value for every organization is the data where is your data and what are you going to do to protect that i think that is a disproportionate focus of us to make sure we have the right controls we have the right uh, uh risk management and tools process part of that so we have a we have put a proper process data governance process we have put a risk risk and ai process i think there is a human part of it and there is a 
technology part. You need to bring the two together to have a much more of a holistic answer. It is not going to be easy. I think industry is still learning a lot. Uh, so, and, but we have to be, we have to stay up front to make sure uh, we are dealing with as we come, as this comes along. Great. And Ramesh, Bain advises other enterprises across the globe on future of technology, right? And how do you apply those same forward-looking principles internally to ensure your infrastructure and operations remain cutting edge and resilient? Do you do you collaborate with your teams that are forward-looking in the sense of you know facing customer facing? you know, advising them on the future of technology. What, how is the collaborative nature uh, within, within the organization? I, I think absolutely spot on. I think there, there is, it's a bi-directional collaboration and bi-directional collaboration with, like in the world of AI, we, we had some best practices and we share, I spent a lot of time with some of our clients in terms of sharing how did we do that, what we did and how, how it made, brings it to reality. A lot of times the customers are CIOs, CTOs or COOs who want to understand the real level, how we have set up the architecture, how we have secured it, what type of data governance process we have put in place, how did you monetize the data. So we, a lot of our teams have thought leadership and whatnot, but if we want to talk about how did we bring it to life, I think we, I, I joined some of those teams. And But it is beyond that, it, what we have a collaborative relationship with our practice is to make sure what we produce is also the best practice, is in line with our best practice, like we did SAP implementation. Uh, that SAP implementation is an example that our teams use. They don't have to use me as they can use themselves, how we actually leverage our best practices, how we actually have zero customizations place that we recommend, how we focused on the business value. So I would say is the bi-directional in some cases, the, the point of view we have is we embed that in our way of delivery and the, that also becomes a bi-directional process in terms of architecture best practices or delivery best practices, our teams leverage it to share with the clients. Sometimes I'm part of that, but I don't have to be all the time. That's fantastic. Being a you know technology uh, consultant myself with a, with you know at Timo, we I can you know it totally resonates with me because when when you tell your customers that what we are preaching is not is also something that we did and we do it well and sh that you know we eat our own dog food i mean that that builds a lot of trust and credibility absolutely and where do you see technology you know whether it is ai or quantum computing you know there could be something else that could be coming up in the next one year in the next five years what's your outlook on where the world is going to be in regards to technology I think it's hard to comprehend that. The, the honest answer is, I think it's hard to comprehend, but it is, what is critical, what, what, I, what I do know is technology, particularly with AI, is going to play even greater and greater role. There's no doubt about that. I think the second part of that is that's uh, related to that, we still have to solve some fundamental problem which is related to energy and, uh, energy and powering this kind of technology. We don't have enough, the US doesn't have enough power, uh, or if we wanted to build uh, these big mega data centers that actually enable AI and whatnot, we have, we have shortage of that. That needs to be solved as a, as a key enabler, because we have, we are at a cross source of uh, environment and uh, technology kind of going in different directions, which is, uh, so I, I would say that is a key enabler, a key part of the process. I think tech and AI is going to play a bigger role. I think that thing would be, do we, do we have enough compute? Do we have enough processing power to enable that? I think then there is a regulatory landscape that we have to also understand. This is evolving fast. We need to make sure, I think uh, for all the reasons we all know, geopolitics and whatnot, people are going left and right and making sure we have controls in place that actually enable the right level of control to the right level of information in right level of geography, I think is going to be paramount and is going to be critical. We see that early signs of the, so uh, that that to me is we, we know that. I think, uh, and I, I and I think the, the amount of change that's going to be driven the system is going to be unprecedented. And we have to be in this era of constantly learning, constantly, uh, constantly learning and constantly exciting the system to learn more and more and more. I think as we think about that, we can actually navigate every technology landscape. So to me, that that is uh, some of the fundamentals by which apply. I don't know clearly what, where all things will head out, but but being 
being uh, kind of thinking future, but also fo focus on what to execute today, I think to me is an important part. Of it. That's very insightful. And that brings me to my last question, Ramesh. It's a two-part question. Um, what advice would you give to aspiring IT professionals who want to make a significant impact in their careers? How can they develop the skills and mindset needed to lead in today's you know, fast-paced, technology-driven environment? And the part two of that question is, if you were to go back in time and meet younger Ramesh in Kashmir, what advice would you give him? I would give, I would, I would give advice to them uh, three key advices. First and foremost, I talked about that is manage yourself. If you are not able to be at your best self, no matter what you do, I think you're going to run into a dead end at some point. The, the running hard is important, but running smart is even more important. So manage yourself really, really well. And take, take care of yourself, be the best of yourself. Once you are yourself best, everything else will be important for you. That, that to me is the number one. I think the second one is learning. We are an unprecedented amount of change. Constantly learning both human, hum, at the hum, human level, personal level, I think is, is going to be the way to stay. So how do we constantly learn? How do we constantly uh, connect to the ecosystem? Every day I have a learning on technology, what journals to say, what to read, what's going on in the ecosystem. It is not a static ecosystem, the amount of change is there. So how do I constantly learn is going to be important. I, I think the other part is world is flat from a people standpoint. How do you become the servant of the people which I talked about is important. The world of command and control is dead to me. The world of collaboration and communication is here to stay. The world of purpose with collaboration and communication. How do you actually do that is really, really important. Uh, so that would be my third advice. And if I was to if I was to think about those three things kind of enable you to be to do what will do that. Don't worry about I need to be there, that. I think learn every day, focus on every day, deliver value every day. The system will take care of stuff. I jokingly say to my teams, I never asked for promotion for the last 30 plus years because I never thought about that. I said the system will take care of you as long as you deliver your best self every day. And I, I think you have to trust the system and kind of go with that. If you're worried about your promotion, what do I do three years from now? You're not going to do today then three years don't exist. You just need to focus on today. Amazing. So the three things are manage yourself, continuous learning, servant leadership. And then the fourth thing, which was brilliant, is focus on the process. Don't focus so much on the outcome. The outcome will happen if you... Yeah, and I, I think if I was to add uh, uh, one more time is, I think what we have, what, what I just said, at least my own learning is, what got you to a certain point will not get you to the next level. Constantly resetting and understanding where are we? What am I doing? What is outside in? Like, what can I do? So I think to me is that, that if, if I was to add fourth or fifth is like, is like what I, I think Stephen Covey had said, what beautifully said is what got you here will not get you to the next level. I think the uh, same important aspect is this, this whole concept of which I talked about, the snake analogy of all the, uh, and of letting go of the old skin, that is hard, very, very difficult, but very, very critical to do that, to reset. And let, let, that's why people change organizations because that gives them a reset. If you grew organically in the same organization, sometimes it's very hard to understand because you feel like everything is, you have not, you have not grown all the skills that you need to do, which is important, which is, which can be a, which can actually hurt you down the road. Yeah, that, that is so true. Uh, what what got you here wouldn't get you there. So constantly learn, as you said, continuously adapt and focus on the process. That's brilliant. And that's a wrap for today's session of uh, the Otimo CIO podcast. Ramesh, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your journey and your insights. Uh, it's been great hearing how you're leading the charge in tech and innovation. Uh, to all our listeners, we hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Uh, if you found it valuable, don't forget to subscribe, leave us a review and share it with someone who might benefit from the conversation. Uh, we've got more great episodes coming your way, so stay tuned. And until next time, keep innovating and leading the way. Cheers.